I don't know how, those of you, I hope you, I don't, I don't care if you vote or not next week, but if you do vote next week, and if you think about the issues, I, I'm going to show you two slides, okay? And I, I want to show you a couple things. And if you're Americans, I want you to really think about what, what, like, what we've come to and what's happening that you probably, that you certainly don't know about. So, from 1983 to 2010, this country grew the economy and just extraordinary ways, okay? Just create, we generated and created so much wealth. And of that wealth, it's going to go somewhere. Like, who's going to get the wealth? So 1983 to 2010, who's going to get that? Okay, where is it going to go? What kind of society do you live in? Where do you want to see that go? Okay, the, 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 the trillions of dollars, where does it go? Okay, so the creative wealth, the bottom fifth, of the United States made lost 2.6% of their wealth. The second fifth lost 1.3% of the wealth. All the new wealth that was created. This is the this is the tech boom. This is like holy shit. The economy just exploded in the post-industrial revolution or at time, okay? The median fifth, the middle fifth, lost 1.5%, meaning that the poorest 60% of Americans lost wealth in that time, okay? So all the trillions of dollars that was generated in those years, they lost money. The next fourth, okay, the, the people that would rank between like 61 and 80th in there, they, they were able to gather 4.3% of the wealth. Dude, you following this, right? The 80 to 90th, 10.9%. The 90 to 95th, 16. The, the richest 5% took three quarters of all that wealth. That means the richest 5% of Americans figured out how to grow an economy, trillions and trillions of dollars, grow an economy unlike any economy has ever grown in human history. And the richest 5% took 75% of all of that growth. Okay? And the top 1% took 38% of it. So by the way, if anybody wonders why, how it is that we got to, place, oh, to a place where Donald Trump became president of the United States, look no further than this. Because you got a whole bunch of Americans who completely got left out. And I don't blame Americans for voting anybody into power. People are just pissed. Who are you going to vote for? Who are they going to vote for? Hillary Clinton? You just vote for anybody but the people that did this. And you may not know what happened because you don't. Because you're, you're lost and you think it's the Democrats or you think it's the Republicans. It has nothing to do with that. Go to the next slide. So here. In the Bush years, the wealthiest 1% of Americans received 65% of the income gains. 65. So go back one. So here, in these years, 83 to 2010, the wealthiest 1% got 38%. Go forward. Now, in the Bush years, 65%. So Barack Obama, the socialist, remember Barack Obama, the communist socialist guy, the black guy, who like not, does nothing but want to give like all of the money away to poor people, right? Isn't this it? 
Isn't that what Fox News says? This guy, he's like the socialist, he's giving it all away. So he comes in, he completely revises the policies, and he says, okay, we're going to really help poor people, we're going to help black people, and we're going to like really screw over white people and rich people. Because that's, you know, because I watch Fox News, and that's what they said about Barack Obama, so it must be true. Because it's truth and it's accurate. And so the wealthiest 1% received how much of the income gains in the first five years of, of how, what do you think it is, bro? Out of those, uh, What's that? What do you think? Out of the, the, out of those choices yeah, those choices. Probably 78%. 78%? What is it? Same. Same? Yeah. Dude, come on, man. It's 95%. So here, you ready? All of you, all of you so-called conservatives or Fox News watchers or whatever that hate Obama because he's a socialist, 95% of all the income gains went to the richest 1%. So you, you wonder why we have Donald Trump? You wonder why people are just going to vote for anybody who just says, fuck you, even though he's from that? Doesn't matter. This is it, right? This is it. And so now you got, not only is Angie down here being told that, hey, Angie, you can compete, but not only, but Liam not only was here, the dude wasn't here anymore. He's like out the door. He's out in front of Thomas building. That's where he got to. And it's like, we're telling Angie like, hey, go ahead, Angie, catch up. It's like, where's he gonna catch up to? The hell? Okay, go to the next slide. So in the past year, last year, the richest 1% of Americans gained $6.5 trillion in wealth. Dude, the bottom 60% don't even own stock. It's like they don't do nothing. So here we go, right? So by the way, get ready for Donald Trump part two. Go to the next one. So the richest, four richest Americans... This is a really hard one, but it, here's Warren Buffett, right? His true tax rate, 0.10%. Dude, 0.10%. Look at Bezos, 0.98%. You're paying taxes. You're not paying taxes like you. Eh, not you. It's different. You, you, whoever. Like, they're getting around this stuff, man. So here we go, right? So how, what are we going to do? All right? Go, go, look at Musk. So Musk actually paid a lot of taxes, 3.27% in the, in the years 214 to 218. Go to the next slide. Okay, ready? So here's my question to you all. At what point will our current system, uh, socioeconomic system, offer reasonably fair opportunities to a reasonably large majority of people? So, so here, I want to explain this, right? So the Supreme Court... The Supreme Court is going to rule, going to strike down affirmative action, like at the universities for sure, and they're just going to strip it away from any workplaces because we're going to tell people like Angie down here to say like, yeah, well, it's not fair. It's not fair to offer you anything at all, these special programs and special things because you're a woman or because you're black or because you're Hispanic or whatever, because... It's not fair to people up there, okay? So I want you to think about everything I just laid out, and I want to ask you, at what point is our current socioeconomic system going to offer, as it is, going to offer reasonably fair opportunities? Go ahead, man. I mean, I feel like it's going to be like on and off like that for forever, it feels like. like uh, is there ever going to be a time where it's like, everything is perfectly equal for everybody, you know, like, because it's probably not going to happen, if I'm going to be honest, like, it, uh, like th well, at least when I'm alive, like, uh, in my opinion. So, okay, so you're saying, so here's a rhetorical question, like, at what point is it ever going to be like that? Like, yeah, yeah, okay, right? Like, what? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, at what point? No point. <laughs> I don't think there are any, it's going to be reasonably fair at any point, because like you said, um, it's always gonna be 
it's unfair for the people at the top and it's unfair for the people at the bottom to get more and to give less and it's never going to be fair because they're never going to want to bring the people who are all the way up back down and they're not going to want to push the people they're not going to want to push the people that are down up because then everybody's complaining now everybody's going to be like well it's unfair it's reasonably unfair everybody wants more nobody okay. wants less so um Hey, hey, on, hey, on. When Don, when Donald Trump gets elected in two years, you're gonna understand why, right? I mean, are you gonna like? I mean, you're gonna get it, right? Are you gonna understand? Hey, so what, what would you say to this? <laughs> I mean. In a sense, I can understand like how or not not that I personally would have liked that, but or not that I would have personally liked that, but I can see like how or why he can get like potentially reelected if that's what you mean. And then, um, well, why, yeah, why would he get reelected here? I think maybe this is just like my personal opinion, um, especially since um, like since I had. Like a little bit of backstory, since I had like parents who own a small like restaurant, like for people that owns like businesses, it gives them a lot of benefits, especially towards like taxes. Like, because uh -huh. during the time when uh, Trump was president, obviously, um, when Trump was president, during that time, uh, like people that own businesses, whether if it's clothing store, small restaurants, or whatever, in including like my parents, it helped. It helped them like a lot more financially to like make make a living, and um, and so it's it wasn't like a very big um, tax burden on them. So it was, so it helped them like easier to like like manage business, especially like yeah. Okay, all right, but you get. How yeah. people are just pissed. But yeah, yeah, Dude, I, get, I get it. Can, can you go back? Can you go back a slide? So you understand? Can you like this right here? Yeah. So I could, I could, I actually could have you read this on. It'd probably be good for you to read on the third exam to read the article. This comes from ProPublica, and like, but <laughs> like, it takes a lot to really understand. All people know is they're really angry. Yeah. And so they're just gonna vote because they're angry. It doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. right? And so that's it. Like, all right, I get it, but they don't know. So, but okay, go back, go forward, go go to this. Can you go to the next question? How, so, how do you design a system that has the greatest amount of fairness for the greatest number of people? So, Samal, what would you say? How do you design that? Because we've already now we've walked into this thing here. The Supreme Court's going to decide. Hey, you can't. It's not fair to help Angie out. All right. So, what do you do then? Right. If, if you know, you've got the this top, the wealthy people who are just taking all of this money and it's just designed for people, the wealthiest to just earn so much money. They all think they deserve it because they take the risk. It's like it's like he you know, it's like your parents take mm -hmm. the risk of having a store. It's like that, that's a lot of risk. You know, this is not a risk. I work at Penn State. I got to I have to come to class every day. I got to do my thing. Whatever. There's no risk. If I, if I, I'm not going to lose money. I'm not going to lose my livelihood. I'm not going to, if the economy takes a downturn, well, whatever, I'll just go get another job. I'll work at Walmart. I'll be a greeter. I can do that pretty well. Like, or they don't have greeters anymore, but I'll do something, right? Mm -hmm. But you're, they take a risk. Mm -hmm. So, okay, but go to this one. How do you design it? By the way, y'all should be thinking about this question that's impossible to answer, but this is the one that is on the table. And, and, and if we hadn't gotten the, 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 the creativity sucked out of us starting in kindergarten when the teachers were ringing bells and sucking our souls, we really would want to sit around and think about these things. Go ahead. I guess that um, instead of trying to bring down, like, I'll say rich people, bring down rich people and instead of trying to 
instead of bringing in rich people, I think like it, what she was saying, like the unbalance of oh, if you pay close more attention to trying to like uplift the lower income people. Well, that's what we're doing all the time, right? But we like, but then people with money and power we'll get, get pissed at that. Get mad, exactly. So I feel like. In order for it to become fair, you would have to do that, but then keep at like an equal balance, like. Okay, all right, some kind of equal balance, right? Okay, so you gotta give a little bit more to people at the bottom, but then I guess we gotta keep giving the people at the top more tax breaks, right? Okay, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, somebody else. Did you guys want to answer? No. Do you have anything? Um. I've always asked myself this question and I don't All think right. there's an answer to it. Okay. Or I, at least I haven't figured it out, but what are we gonna give the people at the top? They already have it all. Well, they don't have it all. They, they, they don't have of. it all. They just have figured out how to design a system where, where they have as much as they can possibly get without people at the bottom having a major revolution. Which is like, by the way, the people that stormed the Capitol building on January 6th, I don't even know, they don't even know what the hell they're pissed at. They're just pissed. They don't, they don't have any idea. They have nothing. They're just pissed. And they've been told to be pissed, so they're just pawns in a, like a war of people being pissed. But it's like, you, you, they don't have it all. They just have as much as they can get before the people down there start revolting. And the people down there have a lot of guns, so you gotta like keep them, you know, in a kind of their place as much as possible. But yeah, can I talk? Yeah. Okay. Um, first off, I want to say like it's it's really hard to like know like what to design socioeconomic system that would be fair for everyone because everyone's always going to have their own self-interest. So no matter what you design, there's always going to be some form of complaint. But if but if I were to answer, obviously it's not going to be a perfect answer. I want to say, like, instead of designing a socioeconomic system, I think it would be best to, like, work on, like, other form of systems that contributed to the unfairness, like the education system. Like, like for example, like the SAT and the... Um, ACT, there's ACT, but there's one for the graduate yeah. school, like, after you get GRE. the... GRE. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. GRE because they both like could more benefit towards um, like families with higher income so it gives them more advantage versus those who don't have a higher income because there's so much okay. money into all right so what do you, so then what do you do like you take we see that graph mm -hmm. there yeah. about SATs so then do you give people who have family incomes who are lower do you give them a number of points we're just gonna add some points to your score I would I would say um, for example, like during COVID, mm -hmm. when they took down the SAT, like as yeah. an option, yeah. I saw this on the article for UCLA. They had the highest amount of like applicants that was submitted to their school, like since, yeah, it had like the highest amount of applicants. So that even though like obviously it increases the amount of competition, but it shows that like it, it like brought down the barrier so that way everyone like regardless of like their economic status could yeah. have the chance to apply without the financial burden okay. yeah okay i got that but yeah. then how do you decide who the smartest people are like in this classroom here can it can i like throw this out to you like in this classroom you, you just got to jump through hoops you got to do the work if you do the work then you get a grade and most of you end up getting a's because most of you end up doing the work but there are some people in this classroom, I wouldn't trust you to wash my fucking beer glass. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I have no idea, but I don't know who they are. And so if I just say like, okay, well, y'all just go wash my beer glass. I don't, I, don't, I don't know who to trust, you know, to do that, let alone to design uh, a, a, a security system to keep the Russians and the, the Chinese and the and who else, who, whoever else, out of our, out of cyberspace here at Penn State, which is actually pretty serious, and like from controlling our nuclear weapons. So like, shit, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yes. I was going to add that start with putting more funding towards schools in low-income areas, so okay. therefore they're able to 
have the same opportunities. And then when they get into university, it's about yeah. who really knows stuff instead of who had the advantage of okay. better education compared to All others. right, I got that. Dude. And we do that, and a lot of people up there then get pissed. Because, like, what, what are we spending all the money there for? Hey, wait, hang on, y'all. Well, we have one minute, and Derek has the final comment. So, yeah, I mean, as, like, we can, I feel like it's just, like, you keep saying the fact that they're going to be angry up there or they're going to be angry down there. Like, it's just a continuous cycle of just anger. Yeah. So, like, creating, a, creating, like, a socioeconomic system is just going to be very difficult. Not saying it's impossible. Yeah. But yeah, it's it would just cause stuff like that. All right, y'all, listen, man. Yo. We'll see you on Tuesday. Hey, thanks, everybody. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, give him a hand. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, thanks, man.